here in the office that we're unboxing today. So we're going to show you how that goes and how to set up the printer. Uh, you know, it's a very quick process. We've done it a couple times now, so we're uh, halfway there to becoming experts. So, you know, first open your box. Uh, be careful how you do so. When you do so, the first thing you'll see is the instruction book. We don't need that. <laughs> Just joking. So you can take the lid off. You'll see the machine is right there for you to take out. The first thing is to take off these two protective covers. And then carefully uh, take your machine out and uh, make sure the box doesn't come with it. Oh, there we go. When you do grab your machine, try and grab it here from the side uh, or on the inside lip here, but not from the bars, the shiny silver bars that you see on the inside. If you uh, grab it from those and lift, there's a big chance that you'll actually end up bending those bars and your 3D printer won't work as you want it to, uh, you know, causing it to jam and making prints not come out to the, same, to the highest quality as it possibly could. So, that's what a fresh replicator 2 looks like, straight from the factory, a very nice machine. And as you can see, uh, it's, the moving components are currently held in place by a couple of different features, so they don't move around in transportation and get damaged and so on. So the first thing is there's a little uh, clip here that's on the two bars. You unclip it like that, and then you can slide it out. So this is the one right here. So you just push the clip like that, you can slide it off of the belt. If you actually look at it closely, you'll see it's a 3D printed part, which is kind of neat. Uh, then you've got these two side pieces here, which are easy to remove. You just grab yourself some nice big scissors, or side cutters or something, and you put in there and cut. There we go, that's one. And that's two. Perfect. So again, these are nice little 3D printed parts. You can then push these clips through like so. And we'll move the extruder drive. That's one zip tie. And that's the other one. And now your print head is free to move so that you can go ahead and print something. Um, so there's a couple of other goodies that come in the box. Some more protective pieces. And a little starter box that contains a couple of, uh, of useful things to get you printing. Let's have a quick look at what's in here. So the first thing you'll see is you get a little bag with a bunch of printer essentials in it. Uh, you've got a USB cable, you have a little spool holder, you've got some grease for when you do the maintenance on your machine, and you've got a bunch of Allen keys that pretty much let you take anything apart on the machine and put it back together. It's actually quite great how uh, MakerBob has thought of that. With a couple of tools, you can pretty much have everything apart or fix whatever you need to. Um, you also get your power supply, obviously, which is really just a... Maybe they have a new style now. Which is really just the same as an old laptop power supply. So actually, uh, this is quite an environmentally friendly way of making things because one of these things uses less power when it's running than your computer, and a lot less than a big factory. I can assure you of that. You get your guide tube for your filament. That's going to click in here into the extruder drive, and then there's a little clip on the back here that you can click your filament tube into. You get your build plate, which is a nice piece of laser cut acrylic of some description. So that just clicks into your makeup bot like so. Let's see. It's brand new, so okay, there we go. So that's quite good. You get a couple of these uh, large sheets of, uh, of basically painter's tape to put on. So most people don't print directly on the build plate. They print on either painter's tape or Kapton tape or you hairspray, lots of different options. Um, we've never really used these because they're a bit of a pain to get on and nice and smooth. Uh, any bumps that you have on your build plate in the tape when you're printing will show up in your actual print. Um, so, you know, we just use uh, our blue painter's tape 
like this that we lay out in strips, it's easier to apply. You also, get with your MakerBot some PLA to get started. There you go, just some natural PLA, which uh, we've seen with all our MakerBots, we've just gotten this natural color. It'd be nice if they uh, switch the colors up so you can get something a little bit more interesting than the semi-clear. And that's it, there's nothing else uh, that comes with your printer. So you're pretty much uh, set up, ready to go. Uh, if you were to plug it in, we'll do it quickly, you'll see that there's actually some files already saved onto the SD card. So you can actually start printing uh, without even needing to connect your printer to a computer at all. So. So plugging in the power supply is really easy. Uh, on the back here you've got a port for your power supply, for your USB, and also uh, an on and off switch. Um, you don't need to connect your 3D printer to the USB port really unless you want to hit print directly from your computer or whenever you're updating firmware. Uh, we don't suggest that you print from your computer because it sends over the data through USB as it's printing and if anything interrupts your USB connection or if your USB connection slows down then the print will fail. That's why uh, you should always use the included SD card and save things onto the SD card. Alright, so it should be turned on now. He said, there we go. Perfect. So you'll get a bit of a welcome when you've uh, started your PC or your makeup off for the first time. And it'll then go and auto level itself. So to level the machine, So once you start leveling, you should have a tool with you to level the build. Um, we use this, it's uh, called a feeler gauge, you'll find it at the, the better auto parts stores and it's used for uh, setting valve clearances and some other things. But it very, allows you to very precisely set the distance between the nozzle and the build plate. Uh, MakerBot recommends that you use this business card that they provide to do the same thing. So you just slide this in between the nozzle and the build plate until there's a bit of a tight fit and then you know you've adjusted it right. Um, the problem with this is that the carb will eventually, you know, not be the right size and get all messed up and then you have nothing to compare it to. This way you, you get a much better uh, feel for how well your bed is leveled than one of these tools only costs 10 to $15. Okay. So I just see here that my... So you go through the menus, which basically tell you everything that the machine will do, and then it'll start going to all of its different leveling points. And at this point, you just turn the knobs on the bottom of the build plate, counterclockwise for it to be looser, and clockwise for it to be tighter, and you just kind of slide your feeler gauge in there uh, until it feels just a little tight. <coughs> While it is important to level your build plate, it isn't uh, immensely critical that it's 100% perfect everywhere. The uh, MakerBot seems to have quite a big high tolerance for an unleveled build plate and still getting high quality prints. Um, obviously, this is uh, within limits. You, you can't have the, the build plate, plate completely skewed. But we're not saying that you have to be uh, accurate to the micron. The other nice thing about the MakerBots is you does take a little bit of time to level a bed, a couple of minutes, um, but then the bed stays leveled for a nice uh, week or so. Uh, we run our machines pretty much 24-7 and I only have to level them about once a week. Now when you come to the center you always find that it's a little bit tighter than all of the other spots. I'm not sure why but that's just the case and it doesn't seem to affect it too much if you, you know, don't fiddle with the middle position. Alright, so that is basically uh, the printer setup. And now, it's asking to load some filament. So, so 
So you have this piece here that will hold your spools. Just kind of clicks in like so. And this then clicks into the back of the machine. Um, we suggest you go on Thingiverse and you find yourself another spool holder uh, online that's a little bit smaller because these spool holders will only really hold the MakerBot filaments. Uh, we have filaments from other companies and uh, if you try using those then it won't actually work so I can show you right over here. <clears throat> so for example this is a, another third party filament uh, spool and as you can see this is not going to fit in there. Um, so if you go on Thingiverse, there's plenty of people that have designed different spool holders for aftermarket people. There's some spool holders where you've got bearings and the spools rest on these lips and, and they spin. Um, either system is fine. I use uh, the uh, bearing system on my RepRap and uh, this kind of a system on the uh, MakerBots. They both work equally well. There's no real difference. Okay, so... So you can then take the filament, just feed it into the guide tube. Should be fairly straightforward. Now, because we have fresh filament, there's a nice uh, clean edge on it. Um, if you've, you know, put the filament in and then taken it back out for whatever reason, what you'll want to do is uh, trim the filament off because it, it sometimes gets a little thicker at the bottom, and then it won't actually feed into your extruder, and also it can cause your extruder to jam halfway through a print, which is never pleasant. So once this is uh, with the new uh, MakerBot extruders as well, you have a little push tab here that you can push to allow you to feed the uh, filament in. So it's actually quite nice. What I uh, usually do is I actually just push the filament in, even though it's not uh, warm, and just leave it there uh, so it's gripped. Oops. So you'll just about feel that it's kind of gone through the first step of resistance. And basically that means it's just been pinched by the uh, gear inside that's going to force the filament through the extruder. The gear won't start turning until the extruder is warm, so now I can keep my hands free to do something else. So for example, I'm going to start applying some tape onto this. So I have a bit of a blue tape right here. And, uh, sorry. So when you're applying your tape, you want to try to do so in a way that uh, removes the most amount of uh, bubbles or wrinkles or anything like that in your tape possible. Um, so I guess we like to use this big 2-inch uh, tape, so you can cover it quickly. MakerBot gives you this with the Replicator 2X. Please, MakerBot, include it with all your replicators. It's an amazing tool, uh, you know, and it allows you to set up your machine to so much faster. So I'm sure you can find this kind of thing in hardware stores and so on, but it's only a couple of dollars. Come on, don't be cheap on us. Alright, so there you go. That's a nice build plate. As you can see, there's no air bubbles on it or anything like that, so it's nice and easy to print. Uh, or you'll get nice quality prints, especially on that bottom surface that's touching there. Um, and the other thing to note is try and make the edges in between here as small as possible. So actually notice those edges, if you print over it, right, your, your model will have a little step on the underside, which isn't very pretty. Okay, so we're now waiting for it to heat up. There we go. So it's hot. You can see that whatever they had in before was actually green. So it most likely, uh, I guess they print out these pieces on this machine or any machine that ships to know that you know the machine is working fine, right? 
So this is another important thing. When you're first loading filament into your machine, it actually uh, can mix a little bit. So for example, if I've done a black print and then I switch over to white, I need to run the filament for a little while. Otherwise, my first couple of layers will look gray and you know that's not nice and can ruin a whole print, right? So we'll run it for a little bit until we can see it going completely clear. And there you go. It's went from green to clear. I don't know if you can quite see that. It asks you if it did extrude, and we'll say yes, because it did. And now it asks us if we're ready to make something, so we are. And then it takes us right to the SD menu, so we can make something here. Now, I've always wanted to make the nut and bolt. I've not really done so yet for some reason, so we'll see how it goes. The other thing you should always do when you're 3D printing is make sure that the build plate is clean. So we like to use a microfiber cloth here because it's reusable, and a little bit of alcohol, and just wipe the area where you're going to print. Uh, and this makes sure that the first layer sticks to the bed nicely. So it's important, there's grease on your fingers, there's dust in, that settles on the build plate. If you don't do this every time before you print, uh, your prints won't stick, which means they can become unstuck and then move during the print, which makes your print fail, can damage your machine, and so on. And really the biggest problem is uh, the print curling. So if you're printing something fairly large and flat, what will happen is the edges will start peeling up, uh, and then again, that will mess up your print. So by wiping it with alcohol, you can prevent this. And as you see, in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, we've started printing. Hi guys, so as you can see, the printer is finished. You get a little readout here that tells you how long the print is taken. In this case, it's been 25 minutes. And as you see, you can just pop it off the bed. Uh, you'll know you've done your leveling right if you can just lift off the pieces like that. It's really hard to get the pieces off and your leveling, uh, bed leveling is probably not right. You've got the bed a little bit too close to the nozzle, so you know, try winding it back a little bit. Um, what we use is we actually have a little spatula that goes underneath the parts and then we use it to pop it off. And the very cool thing about this is, as you can see, it's a nut and bolt that's been printed and it'll actually thread into each other. So we've made a fully functioning mechanical piece with these printers, which is, uh, I think, very cool. And uh, I've made gears with these printers, you know, you know, I've made pulleys, uh, you can make lots of objects that aren't only pretty but that are actually functional. Uh, and this really changes things, because now you can make a prototype that works on a machine at home, as opposed to having to send it out to somebody to manufacture and so on. And if you're an engineer or somebody who just likes designing things, it really is worth investing in, in a nice uh, 3D printer like the Replicator 2 or something like the Ultimaker. Alright, thank you, that's all from 3D Printer today.